Hello, my name is Robert Shannon Fife, and you tune in to the Word of Faith broadcast. I'm going to come with you uh, to uh, come with another teaching, uh, part two of the Great White Throne Judgment. So get your Bible and follow along with me. Uh, we're going to talk about the subjects judged at the Great White Throne Judgment. So I'll repeat this again. Only Christians will be at the judgment seat of Christ, which will be in heaven after the rapture of the church. No sinner will be at that judgment. Uh, we'll get our rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, that is, if you're a Christian. Now, what I'm teaching about is the great white throne judgment which will be after the millennial reign. Uh, and only sinners will be at the great white throne judgment. So get your Bible and follow along with me. You don't want to be at the great white throne judgment. You want to escape this judgment. Uh, the subject judge is wicked man of the whole human race, except the beast, false prophet, the goat nations, and tares, etc., will be the subject judged. Act chapter 17, verse 31. Luke wrote the book of Acts, and he said, because he has appointed a day. Notice that. God has appointed a day. That's the great white throne judgment. In the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained whereof he hath given assurance unto all men and that he hath raised him from the dead talking about Jesus and in Romans chapter 3 verse 6 says God forbid no he's talking about shall we continue in sin that grace may abound. This is what he says. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? Well, God will. He will judge uh, the world. He'll judge the sinner, man. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. Talking about the great white throne judgment. This is Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos. And this was what he was shown. And I saw a great white throne. Not only was it a throne, but it was a great white throne. And him that sat on it, Jesus, from whose faith the earth and the heaven fled away. Because Jesus is light. And there was found no place for them. That's so sad. A Christian, uh, we know that Jesus promised us, in my Father's house are many mansions, but here are the people at the great white throne judgment, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, is what Apostle John said, small and great. The dead, small and great. Stand before God. Now these people know they don't have no hope. There is no hope at the great white throne judgment. And the Bible says, and the books were open. There's going to be more than just the Lamb book of life. There's going to be a book open of their life. What they did here on earth. And the Bible says, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. It's going to be the Lamb book of life and the book of their life. Open. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. You've heard of people having near-death experiences and they got a life review. That's probably what it's going to be like. And it says here, um, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books 
according to their works. What they've done here on earth. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Those that died and went by the way of the sea. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. They're going to come out and stand before the great white throne judgment. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. God knows every thought, word, deed that they've done. Every idle word shall man give an account for in the day of judgment. Verse 14 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That'll be forever. The second death. There's a physical death. And then there's a second death. Well, there, there is a spiritual death separated from God. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. They know their name's not there. These people probably had many chances of hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ preached to them. Many chances to repent and be born again and saved. But they probably bought the lie maybe some other time. Or they um, had some sin they didn't want to let go of. Or maybe whatever it was that was keeping them from getting saved. Don't let no one or nothing keep you from a relationship with Jesus or going to heaven. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. These people are going to be cast into the lake of fire. That those judged at the judgment of the nation will not be judged at the final judgment. Seems clear from Matthew chapter 13, verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat, wheat into my barn. Note that. Jesus said, let both grow together until the harvest. Did you know wheat will bend? Tares will not bend, but they look alike. He said, and in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, in harvest time, Jesus is going to say to the reapers, gather ye together first, notice this, the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. That's the Christian, the wheat. And uh, in verse 39 through 43, the enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. So he's telling us what this is here. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The tear, the devil sold them. The harvest at the end of the world. Jesus is explaining what this is. And the reapers are the angels. The angels are the reapers. And therefore the tares are gathered and burned into fire. The tares are going to be gathered and are going to be burned into fire in hell. So shall it be in the end of this world. That's what Jesus is saying here. The Son of Man shall send forth its angels. Jesus is going to send forth its angels. And they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. And then with do iniquity. God's going to get rid of it. Everything that offends, and those which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. 
There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Those at the great white throne judgment. Well, here he's talking about, he said that those judge at the judgment of the nation will not be judged at the final judgment here. That's what he's talking about. And he said, the son of man shall send forth his angel and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be willing and gnashing of teeth. We're going to go to hell. Then shall the righteous shine. The righteous is going to shine forth at the sun in the kingdom of their father who has ears to hear let him hear. So if you got ears to hear, let him hear what the word of God's saying, what the Holy Spirit is saying. In verse 49, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 49, he says, so shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth. Jesus said there's going to be angels that's going to come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth because they're going to be lost. They're going to be separated from God. And verse 50, Matthew, well, verse 50 here, I'll read it again. And shall cast them and to the furnace of fire, there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Those that die lost and go to hell. But they didn't have to. They didn't have to stand before the great white throne judgment. They could hear the gospel, repent, and make Jesus their Lord and Savior. But they didn't. They refused to take heed. And... Chapter 24, verse 51, Matthew 24, 51 said, And shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Note that. And shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Those at the great white throne judgment going to be cast into the lake of fire. Uh, they're going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But here, in these verses, it's talking about those judged at the judgment of the nation will not be judged at the final judgment. Uh, Matthew 25, verse 30 says, And cast ye the unprofitable servant, notice this, into outer darkness. There is an outer darkness. There shall be weeping, and gnashing of teeth. The judgment of the nation. They are sheep nation. They're goat nation. How, what is this determined by? Is how they treated Israel. How they treated the Jews. And those that did not treat the nation that didn't treat Israel and the Jews good, they're going to be cast and he said, and cast ye the unprofitable, unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And verse 41 says, Matthew 25, verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angel. Don't believe the lie that people will say, There isn't a hell, there is a hell. And it's forever. Notice this. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. What Jesus is going to say. Depart from me. Ye cursed. Into everlasting fire. Hell's forever. Everlasting. Everlasting fire. Notice this. Prepared for the devil and his angels. <coughs> God didn't create hell or intend one person to go there. He created it for Satan, demon, and fallen angels. God gave 
gives man a chance to hear the gospel and to repent and make Jesus their Lord and Savior. And what they do with it will determine whether they go to heaven or hell, whether it's been eternity with Jesus or eternity in the lake of fire. And verse 46 says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Note that everlasting punishment. There's not going to be no parties in hell. It's punishment, but it's everlasting punishment. But the righteous into life eternal. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them. Well, if there's a third angel, there's a second and a first. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice. The third angel had a loud voice. And he spoke and said this. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Now, I want to say this, make this clear. The Antichrist will not be a worldwide dictator. He will only rule the ten kingdoms in the old Roman Empire. Uh, and this is during the tribulation period. So if you're a Christian, you're going in the rapture. You don't have to worry about it. But those that in those ten kingdoms, this is who are talking to. He said, if any man worship the beast during the tribulation and his image and receive it marked in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. There's no hope for them which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, the wrath of God. And he shall be tormented, notice this, with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. Did you know we as Christians will be able to look and watch Satan, demons, and fallen angels burn forever in, in hell? That will be wonderful to see. And he says here, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment. Notice that, smoke of their torment. Ascend is up, notice how long. Forever and ever. Hell is forever. You don't just burn up. And they have no rest day nor night. There's no rest in hell. Day or night who worship the beast and his image. Those that worship the beast and his image will go to hell and they'll have no rest day or night. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name will be forever lost. And in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, that, and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast, notice this, alive into a lake of fire burning with a brimstone. I want to read that again. And the beast was taken. Note that, so the beast going to be taken. And with him, the false prophet, the Antichrist and the false prophet, that wrought miracle. Now, these were false miracles uh, that demons did, that used them, not God. God works miracles, and the devil always co uh, counterfeits what God does. Miracle before him, with which he deceived them, they had received the mark of the beast. Note that. He deceived people. The only people that seem to be deceived is those that don't know the word of God for themselves. You need to know the word of God for yourself. Not enough uh, to hear the pastor on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday or whatever time you go to church. You need to know the word of God for yourself 
and read the word of God every day. That's the only way you're going to know how not to be deceived. And the Bible goes on and says, uh, and, the, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. There's going to be a battle of Armageddon. Uh, we're going to follow Jesus on a white horse at the second advent, or second coming, if that's what you refer to call it. And Jesus is going to destroy the Antichrist, the false prophet, the armies of the Antichrist, with the brightness of his coming, and with the sword of his mouth. There's going to be a battle of Armageddon. It's just going to be a one-day battle. And the blood going to uh, be up to the horse's bridle. But we win. The church always wins. And in verse 21, I'll read that again. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. The fowls is going to uh, eat the flesh of the horses and the people that died. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. The devil hates this verse right here. And the devil that deceived them, note he's the deceiver, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. That's his future. When the devil reminds you of your past, you remind him of his past. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. You remind him of his future. Revelation 20.10 is his future. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. That's what hell's like. Fire and brimstone. Where the beast and the false prophet are. That's their future home. And shall be tormented day and night, notice this, forever and ever. Those that go to hell will be there forever. You don't just burn up. These already will have had sentence pronounced upon them 1,000 years before the final judgment. So they will not need to be judged again. These are the dead judge, but at the judgment of the nation, there are no dead. Number two, the angels that sinned and are now bound in Tartarus will also be loose uh, from their long confinement and be judged at this judgment. Now, when I say these angels, I'm talking about, uh, it, when you read in Genesis chapter 6, um, the fallen angels uh, got with the women, and they had giants. You remember Goliath? He was one of those giants. He was the last one that David took out. In other words, these women got with these fallen angels, got pregnant, and had a, a race of giants. The reason were to try to stop the seed of the Messiah coming into the earth and Jesus going to the cross. Do you remember in Genesis when God said, uh, he said, the seed of the woman will crush your head. The seed of the woman, the virgin birth of Mary, uh, giving birth to Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, going to crush Satan's head. But it will bruise his heel, meaning what Jesus is going to suffer at the cross. In other words, the devil thought, I got to stop this. I got to stop the Messiah from coming in the earth and going to the cross because that was his defeat. So he had fallen angels to come down and cohabit with these women and cause the race of giant to try to stop the seed of the Messiah coming into the earth and Jesus going to the cross. The angel that sinned, these fallen angels. Remember when the Bible said, we will judge angels? It's them that we judge. Are now bound in Tartars. Will also be loosed from their long confinement and be judged at this judgment. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. 
For if God spared not the angels that sinned, these angels sinned, a, a, a special kind of sin, but cast them down to hell, that's where them angels are now, and delivered them into chains of darkness. These fallen angels are in chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. They're going to get a judgment. And Jude chapter 6 and 7 said, And the angels which kept not their first estate. Lucifer led a rebellion. He tried to kick God off the throne. But he did uh, convince one-third of the angels to go with him. That happened before Adam and Eve was in the garden. The Bible teaches a pre-Adamite world, by the way. And the angels which kept not their first estate. They didn't stay faithful to God, but left their own habitation. They believed Lucifer. They followed him. He had reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. That's where they're at now. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh are set forth as an example. Notice that. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Hell is vengeance of eternal fire. Notice here in verse 7. Is this not like today? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah? I believe things is even worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Back then they weren't even getting sex changed like people are today. And the cities about them in like manner, the cities around them, giving themselves over to fornication, all kinds of perversion, and going after strange flesh, man with man, women with women, are set forth as an example. We, we know about Sodom and Gomorrah. These people suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. These people that, I, I'm going to say this, it's not going to be popular. But homosexuals and lesbians, if they die lost in their sin, they're going to hell. But there is deliverance and there's salvation. You need to be set free from those demons. And you need to repent of your sins and make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. Now, next time when I teach, I'm going to talk about the time of the judgment, talking about the great white throne judgment. Only sinners is going to be at the great white throne judgment. And the book's going to be open. And the book of life is going to be open. And they're going to be judged out of those books. Well, my name is Robert Shannon Fife, and my time is coming and gone. Tune in next week for another teaching from the Word of God.